not eating Misty the cow, we're eating Rudolph the That's, reindeer. Well, come on, Christmas is soon, it's blitzing. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows like a light bulb. Here in Napa Valley. We brought Napa Valley to freaking know. This is the Napa Valley of the Western Alaska. How do you say reindeer bourbon? Is it Caribbean? Caribou um, bourbon. Or it could be like American, you say caribou burgundy, like beef burgundy, caribou burgundy. I like caribou burgundy. Caribou is caribou in French. I love caribou, I like it better than deer, and I love deer. I like everything we can hunt in Alaska except for brown bear. That's the only one I don't like. Who likes brown bear? My dad, uh, Osley's dad. It's super gamey and tough, like, no thank you. But um, this is one of my favorite things to make, like, in life. What's the difference between rain or caribou and regular beef? Well, regular beef comes from a cow. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We can treat it like beef. Okay, we're not eating Misty the cow, we're eating Rudolph the That's, reindeer. Well, come on, Christmas is soon, it's Blitzen. They can not spare Rudolph. <laughs> Blitzen can go. Blitzen can, yeah, he can get butchered. I can roll up my sleeves. Well, it definitely takes two hours to make, like tops, like normally like, three hours maybe. Sometimes it's a two day process if you're drilling a child. Caribou bacon. Um, herbs like thyme and bay leaf. I always put rosemary in, but that's just me. And then little tomato paste, garlic, carrot, mushrooms. And then if it gets too thick, we can add some beef stock, beef broth. I wish we had beef bone broth, but it's no. And then salt and pepper. So basically, oh. like this is a bottle of wine and bacon. Most and important part. You have a beef board. board you know. I have been on three caribou hunts. Two successful, one never saw caribou. Um, I've been to Adak to hunt caribou, and then I actually went, my most successful caribou hunt was like 150 miles north of Kosovo, and I woke up and saw the herd. I had my caribou down in two hours, which never happens. Normally it's like five, six days where you're just like, oh my God. Well, you're just like trying you're, to you're like it. You're ready to kill something. I saw the herd and he dropped down, and like I was just lucky they just kept walking my way. And then I was extra lucky that like there was three bulls in the back of the herd. And I was like, I'll take any one of them. I'm not a trophy hunter. I just want meat. You know, it's part luck if you're like stalking like in the willows and they just are the tundra and the there's like one hill that I was like hiding behind when I popped up. I'm like, whoa, they're still there. The only thing that was unfortunate is I had to shoot it at like 350 yards, which was out of my comfort zone. But I had sticks with me. Do you know what sticks are? It's like you can lay your gun on the stick. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I we in Minnesota here. Oh my gosh, like I felt super calm. Like I was like, I knew I had it. Like I just knew it was right in the engine room. So how do you, once you shoot one, how do you get it out of there? Oh, you, you that, it and oh that's it the fun part. Like I shot mine at 10 in the morning and got back to camp at about 11 p.m. Wow. Okay, it's a solo hunt. And then like, I was worried about bears, but you can see forever and I could see there wasn't any bears forever because up there, like you can really see forever. I just had to like butcher it and then um, just pack it out just a little bit at a time. And I was hiking in waders and in the morning everything was frozen. And then going home, I was like sinking down to like this high. I had to like take my pack off and crawl out every time. So I'm not like that buff. And so it took me three trips. And I thought, I thought like, when you start going after a caribou, like you think it's like, oh, I'm only one mile from camp. I was like four. But in my head, it was one mile away. So it was like four miles, four miles, four nice. miles. That's a lot. But you, because you get excited and you're on a hunt. And then I was like, I'm so close to camp. And then you're going down. I was like, I'm not close to camp at all. I cook pretty often. I think I, I cook more when I'm in Nome. I like, drink more when I'm in Nome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and everybody else. Kind of like have to be a good cook if you want to eat well here. I just end up cooking a lot here, which I, which I really do. I actually enjoy a lot. I mean, I'm probably like baking the best, but I do love to cook. Also, it's just fun to just do new recipes. Like this is the first time I've done beef, uh, or sorry, caribou, bourguignon, you know, or of any kind. So this is cool. That's really good. It's like a learning experience. Are Alaskans good cooks? Ooh, loaded question if Alaskans are good cooks. I know a lot of good cooks in Alaska. I'm married to one, and my father-in-law is one, and my cousin's cousin and wife is one. Emily's a good cook. Um, but yeah, that's all I know. That's the list. <laughs> Everybody else sucks. Uh, <laughs>
Emily and I are from Homer, and there actually is a handful of just like incredible cooks that like know what to do with like Alaska seafood and Alaska birds and Alaska meats. If you like learn from your elders, like Ots, my father-in-law, my spider papa, he is like he smokes salmon like the best. But then my husband comes in and just has a little sriracha, a couple tweaks it a little bit, and he's even better. So it's kind of like that, you know. We're just making it more bringing it into the you know, year 2021. Definitely didn't learn to cook on fishing boats. I refused to cook on fishing boats because I didn't want to be pegged. But um, basically, I learned to cook when I was pregnant. And then when I married into the Kilchers, they were such good cooks that I just like learned a lot from them. My father in law hands down, I love everything he does, except for he gets anise on salmon, which I don't like. But oh. everything else he does is friggin' amazing. And then all the all Otzi's aunts are fantastic cooks, and Otzi's a good cook. Do the Kilchers get competitive? Is it their shit in the woods? <laughs> are you freaking kidding me? Um, yeah, so uh, somebody known as my husband broke the wine bottle opener. So, you know, instead of buying a new one, I mean, we just use what we have. We just struggle through it. Right? I'm, I feel like Thor right now. Oh, oh okay. You feel like what? Thor? Thor. Like I'm strong as Thor, you know? The Thor, hammer, hammer god. Huh? I feel like Loki. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I still usually prevail, so. <laughs> you, you always end up in prison at the end of the movie, so. Mm. I'm doing my least favorite thing. Well, there's two things I don't like about beef organone. Cooking carrots, because they take freaking forever, like 10 minutes, and chopping garlic, I hate chopping garlic. If anybody makes comments in the section, she's not chopping garlic right. Read between the lines. My father-in-law can be one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you! I gotta cook the carrots, because even though like this stew, this beef organone or caribou beef organone is gonna sit for like an hour and a half cooking, um, Carrots just need to be, they won't, they won't get soft unless I cook them first. Now the mushrooms, whole another story, we'll add them last. This is a carrot and a garlic, and then I'm gonna add, um, and then they cook that for like a minute, and then I'm gonna put the tomato paste on the flour to make it a little bit thick. And then we're gonna have the real party because a whole dang bottle of wine's going in. It smells amazing. Because this is a French recipe. Mm, freaking flour. I actually know right when I do it, I put it around the meat, but like, there we go. Mm. Oh, that's so good. We aren't vegetarians in these parts. It's not practical to be a vegetarian in Alaska. Okay. Normally I make a bouquet. A bouquet is like when you wrap up herbs, but you don't have any string that won't burn. Like, it'll just burn. So I'm just gonna throw everything in and just pull it out later. We want to put beef broth in it. Get it hot, and we're gonna reduce it. She'll be fine. You know what? I'm gonna get it to 350 before I even throw it in, so it's fine. Well, this recipe says to put it in the oven. To put this in the oven? Uh huh. I've, ever, I've always done it on top of the stove. Weird. But I'm gonna do the recipe. What I'm gonna do is put it in the oven for an hour. Um, it says hour and a half, but caribou is so freaking lean. Um, and I'm boiling it right now so the alcohol cooks off. I say all this. And I can absolutely not know what I'm talking about. But I've made this so many times, I feel like we're gonna be fine. And then the last step we do is throw the mushrooms in. And parsley, if we had it, but when we went to the grocery store in Nome, the parsley looked so old and wrinkly. It was, it was like a horror movie. Yeah, the produce in Nome is really oh. difficult. It's most of the time, it's, it's at the very best, too old. And then the very worst is just sad and limp. And, oh, okay. you're good, you're good, you're good. Oh, wow, look at the multitasker over here. All right, Wait, I should film you doing that. The last step is pull it out of the oven and then add the mushrooms. Give it like 15 more minutes and then we're done. My life story. Ooh. Whoa! <laughs> so mm. No, this is good. This doesn't need salt. I'm thinking. Do you think? 
It was rich. Mm. Yeah, the, the, the shrimps really like to soak up the butter. My All right, are going in last. Final count touches. I'm so excited because I can't do mushrooms with my family. I don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, just pick out your big herbs. That's a lot of help. And I'm gonna eat this. It looks like all the herbs just fell off. I didn't do anything. Well, I'm so on my third time. serving because yeah. it worked out wonderfully. The bourguignon's amazing. All, all worked out. And we the care we didn't overcook the caramel. Amazing. Mm. It's like perfect. Blitzen is really well seasoned. <laughs> And Sorry, kids. Yeah. Santa's gonna be a little slower. Santa's this year. missing a reindeer this year. <laughs> He'll find a replacement. I mean, he's had the same team. It tasted way too delicious. Long. He needs some turnover. Keeps quality up. Yeah, you know you want to turn over the older ones, right? Exactly. You gotta kick the older ones out of the herd. <laughs> Get the young bucks. Mm -hmm. The new reindeer's named Eddie. <laughs> no, it's Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon.